Ronnie and Marie, an old couple, are driving somewhere. They seem to belong to a well-off class. They are amusing themselves by talking about different things. Sinister music is being played in the car. They are driving pleasantly. When Ronnie notices a big-sized truck in the back view mirror, its color is red and B-E-A-T-N-G-U is written on its front plate. Ronnie sets the mirror to see clearly what has been written on it. He starts guessing whether it is beating you or be eating you. The truck blares the horn behind it. Marie turns to look at it, and she tells Ronnie that the truck is getting closer. He changes his lane to let the truck pass by them. When moving a little forward, they notice the same truck parked on the roadside at some devastating place. The truck driver can be seen wearing a black overcoat and a black hat. He is carrying something wrapped up in a sheet on his shoulder and throwing it into a pit. Ronnie accelerates his car to get away from the truck. They notice it again behind them. It seems to be chasing them. He finds alternate sideways to escape and turns his car towards that way. The truck passes straight. The car squeals as it is turned at a fast speed. Ronnie gets out of the car and writes the name written on the truck's plate with the intent to tell the police. When they get back to the main road, they find the same truck stopped at a distance while the driver is observing something on its back. They turn their car back on the road opposite the truck. Ronald suggests checking it out and to inform the police later on. As they stop their car at the place where they have seen him placing some dead bodies, they step out of the car. Marie starts to shout. The narrator tells the audience that they were never seen again. The video ends, and Chase, a young man, is watching it with interest. While Lane, who is driving the car, jokes about his interest in such video. He insists on the idea that such things happen, even now. Lane shows her disbelief, as her area of interest is science and rationality. She picks up a little bottle from the car's dashboard and drinks it. He tells her that it is said that the creepers come every 23rd year and kill thousands of people while staying for 23 days. Suddenly, she stops driving and rushes out of the car. She is coughing and vomiting badly. Chase sends a voice note to his mother and tells her that he is going to propose to Lane and he has already bought a ring. A creeper crawls out of the room, growling. It is a mysterious place in the forest, and everything seems somber and suspicious. It begins to eat something from the ground and growls. It looks dreadful, as it is eating the flesh of some dead animal. A car passes on the road between the woods, rumbling. It goes to a man, crucified and wheezing, he seems to look like a scarecrow. There is the sound of crows cawing. The car stops in the woods, and a young boy named Sam gets out of it. He rings Lane, while rushing somewhere in the woods to pee. He asks her about her pregnancy test. She tells him that she hasn't used it yet, but she knows that it will be positive. Hanging up the phone, he goes under a tree and starts peeing. He notices something falling in the background. When he turns to look, the creeper grabs his face with his sharp nails. The sound of his scream echoes through the forest. Chase drives Lane to the place that she admires the most. They enter a room that seems to be an antique museum. It is all filled with strange things. She asks him to leave the place, but he is busy looking at things. A woman appears behind a counter. She gives them a map. When Lane takes the map, she touches the woman's hands, and the lady gets a vision of a baby crying. The lady asks for $50 for the map. When Chase hands her $50, she congratulates him for the baby but finds that he had no idea about her pregnancy. When they leave, she calls someone and tells them that Lane is pregnant and that he will be pleased. When they get to their destination, they enter a fancy building. Lane gets impressed by it. The room they are going to live in is also very well furnished. Chase tells her he will be back in a minute and goes out while she is just looking around. She tries to call Sam, but he does not respond. Chase comes with a suitcase, in which he has some fancy dresses. He requests her to try them on. At first, she refuses, but then agrees. She wears them one by one and shows them to Chase. After that, she throws herself upon him on the bed. Lane is sitting on the toilet, using her pregnancy test, which results in a positive. She shrieks when she finds something bashing into the glass of the window from outside. Chase rushes in and checks the window, saying that some bird is lying dead outside. A mysterious man, looking exactly like the truck driver that Chase has seen in the video, appears. He removes the sheets of the truck. He is all covered in a black overcoat and a hat. He removes the chain of the back door of the truck. There is the sound of his heavy breathing. He goes to attend a horror hound festival, where they find everyone dressed up in the attires quite suitable for the event. A man moves out of the festival's place, to the woods. He tries to light his cigarette, when the creeper comes over and lifts him to the tree. It throws blades at him, and goes away. They stop by a shop, and Chase looks to be interested in it. He starts inspecting the blades that are said to belong to the creepers. He takes some blades, and tries to aim at the mock creepers. The shopkeeper tells Lane how to aim at the target correctly and she is right on the target when she tries. Suddenly, she drops the blade as she cuts her finger. She has a vision of herself, with the same sign as the wound on her forehead. There is the sound of a baby crying again. People in black gowns surround her. When the vision stops, she leaves the shop with Chase. The shopkeeper picks the blade up and exits, turning the board to closed. Someone takes the blade stained with Lane's blood from the counter. Next, they enter the creeper's draw show. A girl dressed in all black announces that they have gathered there for the Horror Hound Festival. She announces a big prize for those who solved the escape room. The unlucky winners of the grand draw will be taken at will to the historic Barnabot house. There, they will find disturbing myths, and the macabre will be tested to the limit in an escape room. 
While they are announcing this, Chase tells Lane that he has been right in claiming that creepers are real, but Lane does not believe it. Lady Manila comes to the stage to draw the winner. She announces the number, which is Lane's. Chase shows his utter happiness. The hostess announces that if they come out by the daybreak, they would get a special prize. They take them backstage to take them to the creeper's house. Jamie, the producer of the show, introduces himself and gets their signature on the contract. The host takes them to a van. They go to the creeper's house. The DJ starts counting down back in the show to begin the terror of the night. Meanwhile, that mysterious truck gets started by the mysterious man in the black. As the countdown reaches one, the truck crashes and an explosion booms. People show their unease about it, while the DJ asks them not to worry as he has an alternate way to start the music. He opens the truck's door and gets a big hammer out. An explosion booms behind him. The van rumbles while taking them to the new destination. Lane looks upset. Stu, the driver, introduces the place to them. It is the Barnabit family cemetery, a resting place for the souls back in the 1700s. It was believed to be a sacred but haunted place. Suddenly, Michael, the cameraman, tells them that his camera is not working. Jamie gets angry at him. Lane starts to move forward to the cemetery as she gets upset by Chase's being too excited about the girl joining the show. The creeper stops suddenly as it gets a vision of Chase and Lane. Meanwhile, Michael finds someone moving ahead in the black gown. He calls her from behind to get any help regarding the camera. Suddenly, the accursed white crow coughs. While moving his head toward the crow, he gets caught by the creeper. His blood drips down on his camera. Jamie, Stuart, and the hostess move to look for Michael. Chase gets Lane in the cemetery and asks her if she was getting jealous of the hostess. He draws the ring out of his pocket and sits down on his knees to propose to her. The creeper comes like a flash of lightning and takes Lane away with it. Chase comes running and tells them that something big has taken Lane away. He rushes, shouting to call the police, when he stumbles. They find the dead body of Michael. They rush to the creeper's house. Lane finds herself tied with a big rope on a raised platform. When the creeper comes to her, she gets terrified and starts shouting. The creeper marks a cut in her stomach with a knife. As they all get into the creeper's house, the door gets shut behind them. Lady Manila locks it from the outside. They get frightened as they are now stuck. Chase asks Stu about Lane. They all inquire about what is going on there. He draws a pistol at them. When Chase comes forward to charge at him, he claims to be as ignorant as they all are and that he has been hired by Lady Manila to get them there. She has told him that there is a surprise waiting for them. The creeper takes flight and comes out through a pit. The calling of the crows intensifies the summer atmosphere. The creeper roars. Chase asks them to stop fighting and work as a team because they have been stuck there altogether. Suddenly, they see the doorknob turning. They rush upstairs and get into a room. Carrie, the hostess, finds blood dripping from the ceiling. As they look up, they find the dead body of Sam hanging over. The creeper comes over, and Stu fires at it, but it does not harm the creeper. It throws his big axe at him. Stu hardly escapes by bending down. Chase attacks it and cuts one of his arms. Leaving it behind, they rush out. The creeper pulls out one of Sam's arms and eats it up. It gets its arm back as a result. Lane finds a knife placed near her, and she cuts the rope with that knife. She calls after Chase for help. She gets down from the raised platform, crying in pain. She finds some blades there and ties them to her waist. Getting on a table, she pulls open a small window with the help of a knife. When Chase, Jamie, and Stu get downstairs, they do not find Carrie with them. She gets stuck in a room. Horrified about the coming danger, she tries to text someone, but fails. Suddenly, the wall behind her cracks and the creeper grabs her hair. She hardly manages to escape. The creeper sniffs her hair. When she gets down, they get themselves in a room. The boys hear a loud sound. Lane falls into the room. Taking Lane with them, they all go upstairs. Jamie hurries to the phone lying there, when the creeper cracks the floor and grabs his leg. Chase gets to the telephone and rings 911 for help. He tells his location, the Barnabit house. The phone operator does not believe him when he tells her about the creeper. The creeper breaks the telephone. They take Jamie with his bleeding leg downstairs. They hear a crack in the door, so they all rush to escape, but Carrie falls. When Stu comes back to take her with them, the creeper throws its big axe at her and takes her dead body with it. They all go into a room to save their lives. It is a strange-looking room. Lane gets a vision again. She can see herself surrounded by the cult members. They're chanting and rubbing on her stomach. She is covered with blood. When her vision stops, they all see out of the door through a hole. The creeper comes over. Their heads seem to be ringing with his wheezing. They all are groaning in pain. They hear the footsteps and the sound of Carrie's body being dragged. The creeper plays jazz music and eats her brain. They find blood dripping from the roof. Eventually, they see a big stone where the blood comes from. After removing the stone, they see a lot of dead bodies hanging over. Lane understands from different signs she has observed there that the creeper is after her. She tells them that she is pregnant and that's why the creeper wants her. They find some newspapers there in which there is news of couples missing mysteriously. Mary and Ronnie are one of them. They get out of that room with the intent to put an end to all the things that have been happening for so many years. Lane stands in the center downstairs holding the knife. Chase stands beside the stairs, whereas Jamie and Stu go upstairs holding some objects to use as a weapon. They enter a room carefully but find the creeper there. Jamie attacks it with a log. 
It throws the same log into Jamie's stomach and kills him. Jazz music is playing on the gramophone. Then, it comes to attack Stu, but he pierces his leg with the rod and it falls. He picks up the gramophone and throws it on its back. He rushes downstairs. The creeper comes behind him, furious, but finds Lane standing in front of him. She moves back, holding its big knife. When she rushes out of the house, she sits down, places the knife on the floor, and opens her stomach to the creeper. It comes to her and lifts her in the air. Meanwhile, Chase and Stu go upstairs and reach the top of the house. Lane draws the blades from her waist and stabs the creeper's neck. He throws her off. She aims at both of its eyes with the blades. On her cue, Chase and Stu pull up the heavy cross from the rooftop and throw it off upon it. It pierces its neck, kneeling him to the ground. Suddenly, they see lots of crows coming in flocks and cawing. They are hovering over them and attacking them. The crows kill Stu. Chase escapes. He takes Lane into the house. The crows have covered the creeper's dead body and taken it with them on the rooftop. Finally, the police come over to rescue them. Lane's eyes turn red, like that cursed white crow. The creeper growls one last time under the flocks of crows. 